Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. So today we are reading Jeremiah chapter 49. From for, uh, chapter 46 to 51, that's the prophecies against nations. These uh, few chapters tell us one thing. Through Jeremiah, the prophecy of God through uh, through Jeremiah to nation to the nations to show that the Lord is sovereign, and even nations is in God's sovereignty. the The words He says, "Spoken to the nation shall come to pass." The Lord God is not just God of Israel; He is God of all the earth. And what he speaks shall come to pass. So here he keeps says, the Lord says, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord. God did not just speak to the uh, to East, to Judah through Jeremiah. Judah did not listen to him. But he wants the Judah, people of Judah know. Even nations shall hear. Then why don't you hear uh, me, Judah? God is the God of all the earth. You run to Egypt. Can Egypt help you? But God's sovereignty also is over Egypt. It mentioned that in the judgment to Egypt. So in this prophecy, especially when during the reign of Zedekiah. Do you know Zedekiah is the last king? Zedekiah was set, was put on the throne by Babylon. But after serving Babylonian king for three years, he rebelled against him. When he took the throne, Jeremiah spoke to him. So that's the situation at the time. Okay. Let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 27. Let's read from verse 1 to 3 of Jeremiah chapter 27. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord to me, Make for yourselves bone and yokes, and put them on your neck, and send them to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, the king of Ammon, Ammonites, the king of Tyre, the king of Sidon, by the hand of the messengers who came to Jerusalem, to Zedekiah, king of Judah. Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 1 to 3. Also, verse 4 to 5, And command them to say to their masters, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the host, that you shall say to your masters, I have made the earth, the man, and the beast that are on the ground by my great power, by my outstretched. And then verse 8, And it shall be that the nation and kingdom which will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and which will not put its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation I will punish, says the Lord, with the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. Verse 8. So we are still on Jeremiah chapter 27. So he continued to speak to the people of Judah to Zedekiah, verse 9, Therefore do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your dreamers, your soothsayers, or your sorcerers who speak to you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon. Verse 9. The situation here was 
So Babylon put Zedekiah as the king of Judah to replace Jehoiachim. Jehoiakim. <laughs> so now Zedekiah was king, but when he was king, other nations came to him, talked to him. Who were those who talked to Zedekiah? King of Edom, King of Moab, King of Ammonite, King of Tyre, the King of Sidon. Verse 3, they are messengers. Five nations here are the neighboring five cities of Judah at the time. So they sent messengers, maybe the you know, foreign secretary <laughs> or vice president, uh, put it in modern days. So they came to Jerusalem to see uh, Zedekiah. Now Babylon put Zedekiah as king. king. Zedekiah was king. So during that uh, incarnation, so he, there were five messages from the neighboring city congratulating him, sending the, the tribute. They were trying to pay tribute, but actually they were planning conspiracy. They want to uh, join hand with Zedekiah, the house of Judah, to rebel against Babylon. That was their plan. The, the power of Babylon was threatening these five nations. So Ammon was not under the rule of Babylon yet. The Ammonite was not destroyed yet. So later on, we realized So Zedekiah rebelled against Babylon. He did not heed the word of Jeremiah. Uh, we talk about why he rebelled against Babylon, because he was afraid of the people uh, around him, his advisors, his cabinet ministers. But his uh, <coughs> government officials was making joint hand with other nations. Together they say, we rebel against Babylon, let's do it. He was afraid of his own people. We have analyzed it, we have talked about this. So Zedekiah was in, capt in captivity. And then uh, they set up a governor. Uh, bef uh, he supported the Ammonites to rebel against those who supported Ammonites to rebel against Babylon. So they killed um, Gedali and then they ran to Ammon. When Zedekiah was, when Zedekiah was king, this messenger came to Jerusalem to rebel, to conspire against uh, Babylon and say that ba uh, Zedekiah, let's join hand, let's rebel against Babylon together. But God f uh, spoke to them through Jeremiah and said, no, Babylon is my servant. Because I will give the give them the land, you must submit to them. Whoever does not serve him, they he will attack you, and the the nations I will punish. I all nations shall serve him, the land and the beast. At the end, I will punish Babylon. But there is a period of time, when the time is full, I will punish Babylon. That's the words of the Lord, Jeremiah, with the bond, with bonds, yokes, verse 2, and put them on your neck. And, and carry out this prophetic act to see Zedekiah with the yoke, bonds, put them on his necks, not just yokes, Yokes, 
it not just one yoke, yokes, bonds and yokes, to see King of Zedekiah, King Zedekiah. And then he will give uh, those yokes and bonds to the messengers of the five nations and tell them, do not rebel against Babylon. God doesn't just talk to Jeremiah, but through the act of Jeremiah, and he, God was telling those who were trying to rebel against Babylon, Babylon is my servant. I raised him up. You must listen to him. Do not rebel against him. But sadly, the five nations and the house of Judah gang up together with uh, Zedekiah here. And the, all the officials under Zedekiah together, they rose up and try to rebel against Babylon. So the third year of Zedekiah, they rebelled against Babylon. And Babylonian's army came, and at the end, Zedekiah was in captivity, was captured, and he died. All his children died a horrible death. And then the Jerusalem, city of Jerusalem was taken. Zedekiah was in the crowd uh, and then he ran away, but the Babylonian army captured him and to Babylon, took him to Babylon. Before a big rock, Babylonian king killed all everyone he loved, his sons, one by one were killed right before his eyes. And then right after all his uh, children were, were killed, his eyes were plucked out. The last scene on your mind, the last scene that you saw on earth was that your children were killed right before your eyes. That's a punishment on you. When you rebel against Babylon, that's the price you shall pay. And then with the bronze chain with, on his neck, on his neck, dragged all the way. Drag him all the way from Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon. At that, that time, at that time, Zedekiah was only 32 years of age. He was king at uh, at age of uh, 21. 11 years later, he was taken captive with many people of Judah. So Zedekiah was not going to Jerusalem in a chariot with the chain on his neck all the way to Babylon, dragged. The last scene on his eyes was that all his children were killed. He could do nothing. It's so, so hard. Jeremiah said, why? Why do you rebel against Babylon? When he was, when Je Jeremiah was taken into the king's palace, he continued to say to Zedekiah, do not rebel, do not rebel, surrender, surrender. You may preserve your life, you may survive. And then many people may be spared from death. Why do you continue to rebel? But Zedekiah did not take his words out of fear. So here we must reflect on our, ourselves. Okay, that's what we have talked about. 
but I just add on this information. But this chapter we are reading today, the ju judgment on five nations, that they will be attacked and God's sovereignty will come. The title I give for today is God rules over all the earth. So his, his front will be set Elam and that's Iran. God didn't just set his front in Jerusalem, Judah. Judah did not listen to him. So God said that I will set my front in Elam to show that the whole earth belongs to the earth. And the, the law rules over the whole earth. He raised up Babylon. May God help us. We must believe our God that he is king over all the earth, not just king over Israel. So let's see the uh, judgment against five nations. So Ammon invaded Israel. They will be chased after. They will be they will be pursued by God. Verse 1 to 6, that's the first paragraph. That's the judgment of uh, against the Ammonites. Against the Ammonites, that says the Lord, has Israel no sons? Has he no heir? Why then does Milcom inherit God and his people dwell in his cities? Verse 1. So Milcom is the capital of Ammon. It's also called Molech. Has Israel no sons? Has he no heir? No, Israel has sons and children. And their sons and children should dwell in God. God is a plan, is a place for Israel, for the people of God, for the tribe of God. So Ammonites, why did you in, invade God and inherit the land? Why? Why did you inherit the land of e, uh, Israel? And God said, verse 2, Therefore, behold, the, he the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will cause to be heard an alarm of war in Rabbah of the Ammonites. It shall be a desolate mold, and her villages shall be burned with fire. Verse 2. So Ahmed will be attacked because they have inherited, invaded and inherited God. Verse 3 to 6 talks about this um, Hasbon will become a ruin. For Malcolm shall go into captivity with the priests and his princess together. Verse 3. Why were they in captivity? Because they attacked, invaded the land of Israel. The secondly, they trust in their wealth. Verse 4, why do you boast in the valleys, your flowing valley, O backsliding daughter, who trusted in her treasures, saying, who will come against me? Behold, I will bring fear upon you, says the Lord God of hosts, from all those who are around you. You shall be driven out, everyone headlong, and no one will gather those who wander of verse 5. So this is the judgment against Ammonites. Why did God judge Ammonites? Because they trust in their treasures, their wealth. 
so he, they thought that they have their own resources, so no one could attack them. But the Lord God said, I will bring fear upon you. In history, 582 BC, then Nebuchadnezzar attacked Ammon. And then 586 BC, Jerusalem was destroyed. Four years later, Nebuchadnezzar attacked Ammon. So Ammon was really weak. And at the end, the, the, so Nebuchadnezzar did not destroy Ammon, but the Arab Arabian destroyed Ammonites. So fear, fear will come upon them from around them. No one will take them, but God still have mercy on them. They can come back. But the afterwards, I will bring back the captives of the people of Ammon, says the Lord. Then 7 to 22, that's the prophecy against Edom. That's uh, 7 to 22. Moab, Ammon are the descendants of Lot, and Edom is the descendant of Esau. So that's the brother of Jacob. And this Jake, uh, brother of Jacob, when uh, Jacob was suffering, he, the brother did not help the bro uh, this younger brother. On the other hand, Edomite attack Israel and loot the land. In the Minor Prophets, uh, book of uh, Ob Obed, uh, that's that's what Obadiah, Obadiah recorded it. But the the record of Obadiah should be after the record of Jeremiah. So in the book of Jeremiah, it didn't tell us that the Edom looted uh, Jacob, uh, uh, Jerusalem. The record was not in the book of Jeremiah. It probably happened afterwards. So the prophecy of Jeremiah should be before the prophecy of, of, of Obadiah. So Edom, out of arrogance, out of deceptions, so God punished Edomite. Uh, we can turn to Obadiah. Oh, sorry, we are turning. To, we're back to the Jeremiah forty-nine seven to twenty-two against Edom. That says the law of hosts is wisdom no more in Teman. Has counsel perished from the prudent? Has their wisdom vanished? Teman, Teman. Uh, so there is uh, a man in the book of Job is from Teman, Temanite. That's one of Job's friends. So Temanite took pride in their wisdom. They thought that they were really wise. So God said, is wisdom no more in Teman? Has counsel perished from the prudent? You should have wisdom. You should have counsel. Why? Why? Right now. You do not exercise your wisdom. How come your wisdom perish, vanished? Why do you boast in yourself? Where is your wisdom? Where, where has it gone? You thought that you were wise, but you did not act wisely. So here, flee, turn back, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Dedan, Dedan. For I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, upon him. 
the great gatherer will come to you. Would they not? They will. Uh, they will peg you like. If beef comes by night, would they not destroy until they have enough? Esau, you, I will. I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places. He shall not be able to hide himself. You can't run away from this. Verse ten, and you will be no more. Verse ten, his brethren and his neighbors, Esau. You you think you can be spared from my cup of wrath? You think that you can hide yourself deep enough, far enough from me? Verse twelve. For thus says the Lord: Behold, those whose judgment was not to drink the cup have surely drunk. And are you the one who will all together go unpunished? You shall not go unpunished, but you shall surely drink of it. So、um, Jeremiah sent a cup of God's wrath to different nations, but the nations say, "No, I will not have them. Have it." Edom say, "I don't want it," but Jeremiah say, "You shall truly drink of it. You can't not drink it. For I have sworn by myself." Verse thirteen says the Lord that Bosra will shall become a desolation, a reproach, a, a waste, and a curse. And all the cities shall be perpetual waste. Verse fourteen to eighteen. God calls nation to come gather and come against Edom. Verse sixteen. Verse sixteen. Your fierceness has deceived you. The pride of your heart, O you who dwell in the cliffs of the rock, who hold the heights of the hill. Though you make your nest as high as the eagle, I will bring you down from there," says the Lord. Verse sixteen. Verse fourteen. I have heard a message from the Lord, and an ambassador has been sent to the nations. Gather together, come against her, and rise up to battle. Edom, for the he was full of wisdom, but God said, "I will attack you through nations, not just one nation, nations." You think that you are just like the eagle? You will make your nest high as high as the eagle, and then you are staying in the heights of the hill. But God said, "I will, I will bring you down from there, however high your nest is." I will judge you just like I judge Sodom,、uh, verse eighteen, as in the overflow of Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbors. I will be like lion. I will be like eagles. You think that you are just like、uh, you will make nests as high as eagle? No one can attack you. Can come near you. Verse nineteen. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the flood. Plain of the Jordan against the dwelling place of the strong. <coughs> I will make them a one away from her. <coughs> For who is like me? Who will arraign me? Who is that shepherd who will withstand me? I will appoint this place. Who? Who can stand against me? Verse twenty. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that He has taken against Edom, and His purposes that He has proposed against the inhabitants of Taman. <coughs> Verse twenty. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely He shall make their dwelling places desolate with them. Now, verse twenty-two. 
Behold, he shall come up and fly like the eagle and spread his wings over Bosra. The heart of the mighty man of Edom in that day shall be like the heart of a woman in birth pangs. Edom was proud, self-deceived. They thought that they were wise. They did not listen to the word of God. God say, I will attack you. From the book of Obadiah, the minor prophet book, the judgment against uh, Edom. Edom, you thought that you were wise. When your, da when your brother are in troubles, in distress, you do not show mercy. You do not help. You do not show any love. And yet, on the on contrary, you rose up against your own brother and robbed your own brother. So Babylon attacked Jerusalem. So the house of Judah has, su has suffered in law enough. Yes, I punished house of Judah. When I punish your little brother, I didn't say that you can, how come you bring extra trouble on them? Where is your brotherhood? I'm punishing your little brother. Doesn't mean that I don't love him. But just because he's not listening, I am disciplining him. I'm punishing him and you are trying to rob his stuff. How can you be so proud? How can you be so deceived? Where is your wisdom? Where is your counsel? Can't you see what I'm doing? So I will punish you. You will become a desolation. You have no strength left, like the heart of a woman in birth pangs. Nations will come and attack you. And you can't even fight back. God rules over Ammon. God rules over Edom. To those who are as proud as Edom, God still reigns. To Ammon. So Ammon was one of the uh, one of the first few who uh, arose and then attacked, rebelled against um, Babylon. When Zedekiah took the throne, uh, Moab, Ammon were there, the ceremony, five messages from five kings. Jeremiah also gave them the yokes and the bonds, saying that they will be attacked if they rebel. As let's we read on, and then uh, Damascus, verse twenty-three. Damascus is not was not part of those who conspire against Babylon. So Damascus is the Syria today. So it's the uh, uh, king of Aram. So it was one of the strong powers before Assyria. Syria arose, then they were one of the powers. The northern Israel, a uh, northern kingdom Israel relied on Damascus. So that's why. And then they attacked, joined hand, and then attacked house of Judah because Israel was divided into Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom. The Northern Kingdom allied with Damascus and attacked Southern Kingdom. But Southern Kingdom, Israel, went to join hand with Syria. As the nation divided, that's their ending. One went to Aram, the other went to Assyria. 
So Assyria defeated、uh, Aram, and also Assyria destroyed、uh, Northern Kingdom. Why they are preference? Why do they end up killing each other? And that's why God didn't let Damascus off against Damascus. Hamath and Arphad are ashamed, for they have heard bad news. They are faint-hearted. There is troubles on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Verse twenty-three. Damascus has grown feeble. She turns to flee, and fear has seized her. Anguish and sorrow have taken her like a woman in labor. In the time of Zedekiah,、uh, Damascus was really weak. They couldn't function. They could not. They didn't have the strength. They did not threaten. They were not a threat to House of Judah. They has been.、Uh, it has been a great threat to Israel since ancient time. It was an ancient power, but being attacked by the Assyria, they become weak, and then they were totally destroyed. And now they are so weak. And then their young men fall, and then their men shall.、Uh, they couldn't even speak. They're totally cut off. They cannot be. That's Damascus, totally quiet. Ancient, ancient countries. They are weak. They can do nothing. God watches over Israel. God rules over the whole earth. Kada and kingdoms of Hassa. Verse twenty two, twenty eight to thirty three. Due to the time, I will just、uh, go through it quickly and not reading the verses one by one. In the desert of Arab. So between Syria and Arab. It's a big desert. There are many people in the desert. They are small na nations, maybe just a, a tribe, and then become one nation. They were like wanderers. They have their own place where they wander off their land, but in general, they are in the desert. There were different peoples.、Uh, two of them, Kida and、uh, Hasa. So the camel of Kida, Kida was very, very strong. And there are also some small nations. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. Twenty-eight to thirty talk about Kada and Hasa will be punished. Thirty-one to thirty-three talks about the all the nations in the desert, including、uh, Ha Hasa and Kada, and together they will be judged. Even in the desert, in the desert, in the ruined place, God reigns, and the word of God still comes to them. Now, verse thirty-two: Their camels shall be for booty. That says the Lord. Says the Lord. 
this calamity, distress will come upon these places. Even the nations in the desert shall not be spared. God still reigns. God rules over this ancient nation, Aram. Even though they are, they are not a threat, God still reigns. In desert, when no one goes there, God still reigns. To those who think that they are wise, Edom, God rules. To the Ammon who taught the lead to conspire, God still reigns over them. To a far off country in the east of Babylon, uh, Elam, Iran, Elam, verse 34, that's in uh, Iran, Iraq today. So Iraq is actually the Babylon. East of Babylon, that's Elam and that's Iran today. So Iran and Iraq today. God still reigns. And God said, uh, Jeremiah said that Elam will surely be judged. And then lastly, most important, verse 37, for I will cause Elam to be dismayed before the enemies and before those who seek their life, I'll bring disaster upon them, says the Lord. My fierce anger, I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. Verse 37. Verse 38. I will set my throne in Elam and will destroy from there the king and the princess, says the Lord. God say, I will set my throne. I do not set my throne just in Jerusalem. Now Jerusalem is destroyed. I will set my throne in Elam. In the east of Babylon, further away from Babylon, from Jerusalem to Babylon, or from Egypt to Elam. The law still reigns. And what I say will come to pass. And I will set my throne in Elam. Don't say that, okay, Jerusalem is destroyed now. The, the holy temple is destroyed. But the throne of God is still there. Because I'm God of all nations. I will give the land to whoever I want to. I will set my throne wherever I want to. My cup of wrath, I want you to drink, you have to drink it. Because the Lord God is the God of all the earth. So brothers and sisters, we must believe today, God rules over all. It's telling Israel today, the rule, the reigns of, of God is beyond Babylon to Elam. God's sovereignty today is beyond our imaginations, our understanding. God is king. He is king over all the earth. But the God in our mind, we never thought that God reigns. Us, or, us today or people back then, they think that the power comes by military, by treasures, by their strength. Security is linked to their powers. Everyone thinks the same. People in ancient time and people nowadays, we think the same. But God telling us today through Jeremiah, God's sovereignty is not by minute, um, armies or strength god is god he is god of heaven and earth his words is power 
His words is power and will come to pass. His sovereignty is beyond our imagination. So today, our sense of security is not okay. Uh, look at the army. Look at the finance of the nations. No, but God will make the decision. God is the God of all the earth. We do not trust in wealth. We must trust in the Lord God. The sovereignty of the Lord is above Babylon. Even Babylon is in His judgment, and Elam is in His judgment. His power is above all. May God help us, especially in this generation. Do not place our sense of security on the army size or or finance. But we place our sense of security on God. China and America are strong nowadays, but that's not what we should trust in. We what we believe. Everything we have is in the hand of God. God can do great things. God can use any nation on earth. God can use China. God can use America. God can use any nations, because the power of God is above all. We need to take God as the God of all the earth. We trust Him. May God help us.
Yes, Lord, you are the God who reigns. Yes, Lord, you are the God of all nations. So, all the way, Lord Father, you are our God, and all the time your will will last forever. So, Lord, we give thanks to you. So, brothers and sisters, shall we put up our hands and glorify our God and praise our God? Let our God receive all the highest glory. Lord, we give thanks to you because you're the God over all nations and the whole land is in your hands. So, Lord, we give thanks to you and we praise your name because all the countries are in your control, no matter how big the military forces and uh, no matter what, they still need to surrender themselves to you. Yes, Lord, we give thanks to you. Yes, you are the king over the lands. Yes, Lord, we give thanks to you. We glorify your name. Yes, Lord, we give all the praises to you because you are the king over the lands, over all the nations, and you you reign forever, and your reign, your sovereignty will never change. So, brothers and sisters, we come from the different countries with our different identities. So, right now at this moment, so we can pair up. We can pair up. So on behalf of your countries, on behalf of your countries, you ask God to reign in your countries. Yes, Jesus, we pray for Hong Kong. Yes, Lord, you reign in Hong Kong. Yes, Lord, your will for Hong Kong will be fulfilled. And let our 611 church, for the sake of your kingdom, for the sake of your will, that let our church really grow into your will as well. May you take care of this place. May you take care of the land of Hong Kong so that the land is filled with your presence and glory. Yes, Lord, you are the God of all nations. You are the God in sovereignty. So when we are in you, we got the peace, and the whole land belongs to you. So, Lord, you can make use of any kings, any countries uh, to obey you, to do your work. Let all the nations uh, uh, turn to you. Yes, Lord, as you are the king of the all lands, so your sovereignty and your glory rise above the land. Yes, Lord, we give thanks to you. So whenever we come out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that you are the king over China. So be it uh, Taiwan and Macau, Hong Kong, or uh, Ukraine, or uh, uh, Germany, and there are lots of uh, uh, controversies. But Lord Father, we pray that you are still the kings to reign over all these uh, places. Even these places had a lot of controversies. Yes, Lord, you are the God of the small countries, big countries, and even the countries in the desert. Yes, Lord, we praise your name.
Yes. So, brothers and sisters, let us stand up and worship Him. Worship Him deeply. Yes, Lord, you are the king over all the big and small countries. Yes, right here. You are here, Lord. Yes, Lord, you are the king over all kingdoms. Yes, Lord, we worship you. Yes, Lord, what we learn is that you are the God above everything. You are the God above everything. Your sovereignty, your control uh, is actually beyond our comprehension. That is nothing to do whether the country belongs to you or not, because you are the kings, you are the law over all nations, be it they know you or not. Yes, Lord. Let all the creations succumb to you. Let all the creations succumb to your sovereignty. Yes, uh, brothers and sisters, you can see that our God is so almighty, is sovereign. So that's why let us really run into him without any fear. Let us really engage ourselves into the truth of God. As God is the almighty God, as God is uh, above everything, that we need to hold on to this truth. So let us really run into him and uh, depend our lives on him. So let, brothers and sisters, let us pray in tongue. Let us uh, really engage into this uh, scriptures. Let us engage into this truth. Yes, Lord, you take control in our lives, in our families, in our tribes, in our city, in our countries. From the east to the west, from Egypt to Elam, from south to north, every past belongs to you. Yes, Lord, you are above everything and nothing can stop you. Not no a language can stop you because you take control of everything and all the kings are in your hands and all the countries need to glorify your name because God, yes, because we know whenever we have you in our lives, we have peace, we have security, we have stability. So Lord, we give thanks to you. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, let, uh, let us follow me in this prayer. Yes, Lord, please forgive us. Sometimes we only depend on ourselves, uh, by our sight. We will look at our own finance. I uh, will look at our uh, wisdom. I uh, will look at our people network. I uh, look at our military force, our financial power. We only depend on all these uh, visible things. And that's why we cannot turn to you. And we cannot turn our eyes to you and understand how mighty you are. And God, you are the God of all the lands, of all the nations. You are the God of our lives. You are the God of our lives. So when we put, when we are in you, so we surrender our, our control to you because you are our mighty king in our lives. So we know that when we trust in you, that our lives is secure and peaceful. So we surrender everything unto your hands and we put our trust in you. We run into you and for sure you will protect us uh, because you take control until the end. And you are our king, you are our God. 
So Lord, we surrender every aspect of our lives to you. May you give us the peace. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your name. So, uh, brothers and sisters, let us uh, go hands in hands. Let's go hands in hands. And uh, yes, God would like to give us the spirit of love in our midst, where we love one another, uh, where we love uh, one another, even among all the churches, and when we live out the life of love. Okay, let us put up our hands and pray to God and pray for all the churches. Pray for all the churches in this world, that all the churches uh, can live out the testimony of God, so that all the churches will become an impact of all the nations. Yes, Lord, we pray for all the churches. Yes, Lord, we pray for all the churches in this globe. May your love come among every one of us, among all the churches. Yes, please remove all the hatred, remove all the unforgiveness. Yes, make full use of us, make full use of all the Tree of Life churches. So let the Tree of Life churches continue to keep expanding, keep maturing. So Lord, we look upon you, we look upon you. Yes, Lord, because you are the King and the Lord of our churches and of our lives. So Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, make full use of us, make full use of us. Yes, put uh, uh, yes, instill the love of God in our midst. Let us love one another. Yes, Lord, we only put our trust in you. May your grace come upon us. Make full use of your churches. Make full use of all your churches. Yeah, yeah, because you are the one to take control. Yeah, and we proclaim. And we proclaim that all the churches are in all the nations uh, will glorify your name. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, uh, starting from chapter 46, uh, God's uh, prophecies are to all nations through Jeremiah. As first came to Egypt, uh, let's assume that uh, this is uh, Israel, uh, Israel, Judah, uh, uh, um, and then believe it is Egypt. So that's why God spoke to Egypt first. So, because uh, during the ancient times, Egypt represented the world, represented the trust of man. So you see that even Egypt faced the judgment of God, and then to the westerns, to the west, that is uh, to the Philistines. A Philistines also faced the judgment of God, and their islands faced the judgment of God. 
So that's why you can see from the from the south and to the west, and all these people face the judgment of God. And then it comes out to the eastern parts of the Israel. The eastern parts of the Israel. And that starts from a Moab. Uh, Moab, Edom, and Syria, they also need to face uh, the God's judgment. That is uh, in the eastern part. In the in eastern part. So uh, they have their own characteristics, uh, just now I shared. And then also starting from Damascus, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, Amnon. And then there is a Kida and ha and Castle, Kida. And all these people were in the deserts, and even in the deserts, and even in the deserts. And the people also need to face the judgments. You, you, do you see that the strongest country also need to face the judgment, and also Yelam, Yelam also faced the judgment. And uh, God set the throne here in Elam. And then uh, tomorrow and after tomorrow, we'll talk about God's judgment upon the Babylon. So that is starting from Egypt and going up to all these parts of the countries. And do you see? God's uh, sovereignty is upon all these places. What does it mean? It means that no countries can escape the judgment of God. So no countries can escape uh, 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 the cup of God's wrath. So no, no countries uh, can escape the judgment of God by depending on their own strength. So the, uh, the wisdom of Edom, or maybe the geographical location on the desert, or the, the geographical location on the ocean, or maybe you're in the place with a lot of harvest, with a lot of abundance, or maybe your country is uh, very strong, but none of these countries can escape God's judgments. And in the same way, none of us can escape the judgment of God. So just like what I said, the king said the said the Kaya, and he actually his destiny becomes very tragic. His destiny, his life was a tragic, was a tragedy. So he lost his eyes. His eyes was put out. He lost all his relatives and families. So what's the meaning of living in his life? So do you see that he suffered, and finally he died there. Let's close our eyes. No one can escape the judgment of God. No country can escape the judgment of God either. So none of us can do so. Yeah, dear children, where are you going to put your treasure? Where are you going to put your hearts? What are you going to uh, to trust in? Today we need to listen to the words of God. Actually, King Zedekiah uh, was a very good example uh, for us to learn. So don't ever be dragged into the world. Don't ever rely on what we could see only. Don't look at our wealth, our strength, our military force. Uh, may God forgive us. And we also need to understand. And God's judgment come upon the whole land, the whole earth. And that's why we need to listen to him. Don't ever follow King Zedekiah. And instead we follow God. I uh, don't follow the fear. Instead, we need to exercise our faith. Not only uh, we need to come up, to rise up. Don't ever follow this world. Don't ever follow our so-called wisdom. Don't ever follow what we can see. And instead, we need to follow God with our faith and to become the royal priesthood. 
And uh, God's heart for us is, is to rise up to become the tree of life. But yet yeah, God cannot find any in uh, Judah. And today we are the New Testament. Uh, Jesus Christ has a redeemed her for us. So that's why we need to follow Jesus. Yeah, Heavenly Father, help us to reflect upon our lives. When we study all these passages, when we study all these uh, 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 prophecies upon the nations, actually you are speaking to us through all these uh, prophecies as well. So you are telling us that nobody, no countries can escape your judgment. Yes, Lord, as God, you take control until the end of the world. And in the same way, God, you take the sovereignty in our lives. And you are the one to do all the arrangements. Before the world was created, and Lord, you have selected us in Christ. So that we can inherit all kinds of spiritual blessings in Christ. It's just like the time we were born. And then you brought us into this world. And you enable us to experience all the things on this world. You are building us and you choose us. And today we can become part of the 611 Church and to receive the vision of the tree of life. And we know that you are the God over the land, over the earth, and for sure your will to be done. And let us follow you closely. So, so uh, my children, let us put up our hands. It means that we are willing to follow God. And God takes control of all the nations. And God takes the sovereignty in your life as well. So let us surrender the paths of our lives to him. Uh, let's put our trust in him. And for sure, God will enable you to become the royal priesthood and his treasure possession. And you are above the, all the places. No matter how turmoil the world has become, that we still follow him closely. And we put our trust in him closely. And in this earth that we achieve the will of God. So, and in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless all the brothers and sisters here. My children, you are the tree of life. No matter what happened to this world, the tree of life will not be shaken because the will of God will for sure be fulfilled. So God bless you, children. What you trust in is not Egypt, it's not the wealth, it's not your own wisdom, but our Lord God. And God is your God. And for sure, he will protect you. He will bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord.